Hello, hackers. What the heck is going on? I mean, it's it's really strange. It really gives me a strange feeling to say this again after so many things have happened behind the scenes. Um. Yeah. Because I I I never thought I would be able to say that again. If you don't know, please watch my previous videos. But I think if you are watching this video, then you are one of the 500k, more than 500k viewers that have watched my Z80 video and one of the thousands of people who have followed the hack project. Now, first and foremost, if you have watched those videos, you know that I basically went with radio silence like about a year ago and th there's a good reason to that but I now understand that it's not the best like cause of action to do I don't I, I, I don't know what's the word for it it's, it's not the best thing to do Basically, like here's the rewind hack sketch meta. You can see there are some loose gates everywhere. <clears throat> it's not finished, but this is like the new plan. Okay, with the elephant in the room, outside the room, let's talk about what the heck happened. <laughs> if you excuse me for the pun. Um, well, mistake happened, and I would say it's on me. I will give the technical details of how one single instruction killed the entire hack project and make the whole goal unrealistic in a future video. I I will do do a full explanation in the future video. But basically, I realized that a known feature of the Z80 that's widely known and carefully documented basically kills the entire idea of using a secret feature of the Z80 to make a protected mode. I can still get the protected mode to work, but that would require making the whole design extremely complicated which is basically the equivalent of building a microprocessor that involves a Z80 rather than making the Z80 do protected mode actually it requires two Z80 so it's actually a separate microprocessor besides the Z80 so it's like building a microprocessor to help the Z80 that use another Z80 or actually a 6502 to help the Z80 and I can basically make that work on any 8-bit CPUs I can do it on a 6800 on a 6502 on all of those stuff and then was like oh what's the point right the whole point is like it's a very elegant design that will make the thing work so I basically just pushed the project to a side, thinking maybe, yeah, I will figure out something down the line. And I never did. That's kind of the entire story of the hack if, if the Retro Computer Festival did not happen. Because I'm going to pull a thing for hack somewhere, because as conspiracy theorists say, that's a cover story. And the real story is that although that Z80 protected mode video gets 500,000 views, that didn't convert to a big attention around the hack, hack project. Like my best doing hack video is around 10,000 views, 5,000 views, I think 5,000 views. And uh, more importantly, I find that no people around me knows about the project. 
I would go to virtual computer conventions and meetups and talk to people and they're like, hey, do you know that the Z80 has a protective mode? It's like there's a video explaining on it. And they were like, oh, really? Never seen that? <laughs> I, w- I would spend half an hour explaining the whole concept to them and they seem like interested and they they're like oh cool and uh, i just have no idea that whether they are actually interested and to be honest that that really wears people down sometimes without the feel of i'm actually doing something that people are interested in i kind of loses the motivation to, to develop the hack even further but again as i said Retro Computer Festival happened just a few days ago here in Cambridge. And that's the first time I went anywhere. And someone called me and said, Hey, are you Andy? And I was like, How the heck do you know my name? <laughs> and, and I was surprised to hear that Oh, of course I know your name. You're the you're the protective mode Z80 guy. <laughs> Something like that. And I was like, oh, you watched my video? <laughs> because honestly, I, I went to the Retro Computer Festival to meet some YouTubers. Not to be met as a YouTuber. And at that point, I pretty much gave up all the hope around the project because Technically, it's barely feasible and requires a lot of compromises to be made. And there seem to be not a lot of interest around the project. And then I talked to more people and I realized they also know the project or they know the video because that video got significantly more view and they really want a proof of concept of some kind to be realized and then i realized that people people still remember this project which is surprising considering that that original video came out more than a year ago this has become a a a big guy x16 thing it's like one video every year (laughs) so not people not only remember it but they also want to see it materialize and I kind of realized that I don't get to just fail everyone's hope just because okay I have some problems myself uh, and then I realized that, that that's kind of selfish actually so here's the decision I am bringing back the hack project and uh, I'm running it in a more modernized way because one thing I discovered during the development of Hack is that communicating in YouTube requires just immense effort and it takes a lot of time especially during the editing you can see that in my later video I try to cut down the editing time even at the cost of leaving a video almost an hour long and that's what i will do in this video but i don't think this video well this video will be very long uh because that still that still saved a ton of time so i'm i'm looking for new ways for people to support this project and to communicate with me so i'm starting a discord channel something that i haven't been able to do for years because of strange reasons basically discord banned me just right after i i started a new account but somehow this time i succeeded and i i can start my own uh discord server so the invitation link will be down in the description below and it will be valid for seven days if you would like to join after that or if you find the link unavailable somehow then you can then you can leave a comment below and i will reply with a updated or permanent link 
What else? I'm also starting my Patreon. I actually started my Patreon like years ago for a completely different project. I'm not going into details about that project, only saying that it's still kind of alive at this moment. But that has been sidestepped because I'm bringing the hack back on the front stage. And the link will be down in the description below. And I think that would improve my efficiency in communicating with uh, people who would like to receive updates on the server because typing some text is actually pretty simple. <laughs> Big surprise, right? So yeah, here's the entire update on the situation and I hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to check the link down below if you want to receive more update about the hack of course you can post some general questions about the Z80 and stuff in the discord server I'm not a experienced discord server moderator of any kind I just successfully set up my account so that will be that but I'm going to try my best to answer all kinds of questions not only related to the hack but related to uh, the Z80 or even other retro computers based on all kinds of architectures so thank you for watching and bye bye